Next lecture is Dr. Uh, Dvorian Chikova from Moscow, clinical experience of using MIEX in high risk patient. Good morning, dear colleagues, dear chairman. It's a great pleasure and honor for me to make a presentation at the MIEC uh, anniversary meeting. I hope that you can see my slides. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, this is the first time we are sharing our experience in the international meeting. Uh, in our clinic, we also have a scientific and educational center. It is our medical academy, um, and it provides uh, an opportunity for us to make studies. Our cardiovascular surgery department is not big. Here is the list of our surgeries in current year. And as you see, the most of cabbages are performed off pump. And that's the main reason why don't we use uh, MEAC commonly. <clears throat> But I hope that soon we will enlarge our list of surgeries with MIEC. Here is some history uh, of MIEC penetration in our clinic. Uh, we had difficult years until 2014. There were lots of changes uh, uh, in our clinics. Our heads of the clinics were changed many times. There were changes in our team and our main opinion leaders uh, had left our clinic. And then COVID-19 had come and we also had some problems, but nowadays we are trying uh, to resurrect our best traditions. Uh, nowadays we use MIEC type 4. Uh, it is a customized set based on any uh, conventional circuits uh, and it is independent of uh, oxygenator type. Uh, here is Vadim Alexeyevich Stepenshikov who introduced uh, MIEC in our clinics but now he is the chief of department in another clinics. And here are our circuits based on different oxygenators. Uh, and of course, a strict strategy is mandatory whatever circuit we use. And team approach is crucial in our work. Uh, what do we mean when we say a high risk patient? There are some con uh, conventional scales to assess perioperative risk STS score Euroscore 2, uh, the scale of uh, American Anesthesiologist Society. But in literature, we can see different approaches and we can consider that a high risk patient uh, is a patient with low ejection fraction. Sorry. Uh, a patient with advanced age and with high Euroscore 2. Uh, according to our experience, we have found that MIEC is beneficial in patients with at least Euroscore 2. Thus, we decided that Euroscore 2 is uh, some kind of marker of presence of the risk. And it is a part of my thesis. Uh, and we have found in our analysis that higher Euroscore 2 was associated with prolonged ICU stay. And at the same time, MIEC was a strong independent predictor of decreased length of ICU stay. The indications for MIEC that we use nowadays, we use MIEC in high risk patients or in patients with intermediate risk and comorbidities that are not calculated in Euroscore 2. And sometimes we use MIEC uh, like extracorporeal life support in critically ill patients, in patients with critical preoperative status. And here are some cases that I would like to present. A 62 years old male patient came to our clinic for scheduled cabbage of pump. He had, <clears throat> he had severe uh, three vessel coronary artery disease uh, with occlusion of anterior descending branch with critical stenosis of a, uh, a big branch of right coronary artery, but still he had low risk according to Euroscorp 2. And on the day the, the uh, the surgery was scheduled, this patient presented acute myocardial infection without ST elevation, but with, with recurrent uh, ventricular fibrillations and uh, with failed hemodynamics. That's why we decided to start ECPR by MIEC. At the same time, surgeons performed sternotomy and made cabbage. <clears throat> but that was not the end of this case. 
uh, after surgery, acute aortic root rupture had occurred. This patient had very thin calcified aorta. Uh, that, uh, because of that, we used peripheral uh, MIAC. And then we made a conversion to conventional CCPB and uh, aortic root repair was performed successfully. Uh, after the end of the surgery, the patient required 30 minutes of reperfusion, and then he was went successfully and transported to the ICU. Uh, during the first 12 hours, uh, he had moderate met metabolic derangements. Uh, there were no neurological signs. The hemodynamic was stabilized. He had mild inflammation. Um, and after 24 hours, this patient was transformed to the general department and uh, he didn't have any problems in further post-operative period. Another case, a 72 years old male patient with post-infarction cardiosclerosis, uh, preserved left ventricular function with previous cabbage, uh, had an acute recurrent myocardial infection due to thrombosis of coronary grafts. Mm. He presented decreased left ventricular ejection fraction, and we have found that he had uh, deficitives of antithrombin-3 determined for the first time. That was the reason of uh, coronary graft thrombosis. And Euroscore 2 was increased to a very high uh, number. Uh, the risk of mortality was more than 50%. And then we started fresh frozen plasma transfusion, to recover deficits of antithrombin-3 and started, uh, started extracorporeal life support by MIEC uh, <clears throat> through the femoral cannulation. At the same time, surgeons made sternotomy, made revision of grafts, thrombectomy, and performed recabish. I would like to stress that circulatory support by MIEC allowed surgeons to perform complete revascularizations. Uh, they made uh, additional fifth graft. Um, after surgery, this patient had postcardiotomic VA ECMO, also performed by MIAC. Uh, he had recurrent ventricular fibrillation, and after stabilization of chemodynamics, uh, MIAC was stopped. The chest uh, was remained opened, and it was closed only after stabilization of chemodynamics. Uh, the total blood loss was one and three mil one and three liters. It was processed by cell saver, and total time of extracorporeal circulation was more than eleven hours. And if we had conventional CCPB, uh, I don't think that we had uh, such good result. We had once changed an oxygenator, and, and there was no presence of hemolysis. Our uh, after extracorporeal circulation. Mm. This patient had a very difficult post-operative period. Uh, there was a bilateral, bilateral polysegmental pneumonia. He got trahostomy and uh, there was acute renal impairment, but without dialysis and some other troubles. This patient spent two weeks in ICU. After that, he was moved to, to the general department. Um, after, um, after a short period uh, of recovering, he was moved uh, to the rehabilitation center because uh, pseudo bulbar syndrome and dysphagia still remained, but he was discharged home without any organ disturbance. A 66 years old male patient it is another case, he came to our hospital for scheduled surgery and he had severe multivessel disease of coronary arteries, uh, including left main uh, stenosis of over 70% and other significant stenosis of coronary arteries. And the Euroscore 2 was high in this patient. That's why we decided uh, to start anticipatory mechanical hemodynamic support by MIAC. And after that, uh, our surgeons had performed cabbage uh, of four vessels with MIAC support. This patient had a reperfusion after surgery and total extracorporeal support time was more than four hours. 
the extracorporeal circulation was successfully terminated and the patient was transported to the ICU. Uh, we had a big perioperative blood loss. It is uh, about one and a half uh, liters, but this patient was big, he had big weight. That's why uh, we haven't started conventional cardiopulmonary suction. Um, so we processed uh, this blood by cell saver and didn't have any coagulation problems. And during the first days in the ICU, this patient had acute bronchitis that caused uh, mild inflammation in the early postoperative period. But then the patient was transported to the general department and he was discharged on time without any complications. Uh, what is the conclusion that we uh, can make? Uh, I think that we should not uh, that we should remember that MEG is similar to ECMO, and we can use this tool for short-term support. At the same time, MEG is as complete as CCPB, and it allows to perform any surgery, and it's very important for us. And MEG is a good bridge uh, for making decision or for further surgery. And definitely, MEG gives a chance for survival to patients with a very poor prognosis, as our cases have shown. Thank you very much for your attention. So we must move to the last presentation. This is Dr. Kiluyeva uh, from Thessaloniki, uh, topic.